Welcome back. So the Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, has declared a state of emergency on the country's oil and gas uh, production. The group chief executive officer of NNPCL Limited, Melek Hiari, who de made the declaration now while speaking at uh, the 2024 Nigeria Oil and Gas Energy Week in Abuja, recently said the move is directed towards increasing Nigeria's crude oil production and growing its reserves. He explained that a detailed analysis of assets revealed that Nigeria can conveniently produce 2 million barrels of crude oil per day without deploying new rigs. But the major impediment to achieving that remains, according to him, the inability of players to act in a timely manner. But then let's not forget, there's also that age-old problem of oil theft, which happens on a massive scale. And despite efforts to check it, the problem still persists. For instance, between the 22nd to 28th of June 2024, the NMPC says it recorded a total of 256 incidents across several locations in the Niger Delta region from several incident sources involving oil theft. And according to the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, in the first quarter of 2022, the country lost an estimated $1 billion in revenue to crude oil theft. So the question is, what difference will the new state of emergency declared by the NMPC make? Joining me now to discuss this further is oil and gas expert, Davey Yeri. Mr. Yeri, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thanks a lot for your time. Now, uh, this new emergency that uh, the NNPCL has declared, would it make any difference at all when you consider the fact that as we speak today, um, Several security measures have been taken to check oil theft. We have, uh, for instance, uh, some independent security outfits like Tantita uh, protecting pipelines. We have soldiers deployed in, uh, you know, across the Niger Delta region providing security and all of that. So the question is, what kind of emergency are we talking? Could, could the NNPC be looking at here? Thank you very much. I mean, that's, that's, that's a good one. Uh, for me, I'm declaring emergency on gas is something that um, uh, if the government takes it serious, they will be able to do something. There are a lot of things associated with uh, production of oil, and we have we have the reserve and capacity to produce over two million barrels per day. But this perennial issue of oil theft. Um, and the uh, age-long uh, pipe that have been uh, corroded for some time, and other issues, like uh, he said, um, logistics issues. Mm. These are issues that need to be tackled. There are issues that need to be tackled properly. We have been having this oil theft for a long time now, and they're uh, using physical measures to, to tackle it uh, by deploying soldiers, deploying um, pipe surveillance uh, people to the community cannot adequately solve that problem. Most advanced most countries, like in Saudi Arabia, they use uh, the drone with precision cameras. Cameras that can um, detect, um, detect um, any form of tampering with the pipe or leakages and send messages to, uh, to the control room. And uh, if Nigeria is, is, is ready to deploy the use of uh, uh, technology to, to, survey, to survey the pipe and do other things, then it's something that they can achieve. And using artificial intelligence is what, uh, is, what is involved. Most of companies like um, uh, Saudi Aramco, BP, ExxonMobil, they have deployed uh, the use of uh, artificial intelligence, it both only in pipelines, both in all the stuff, starting from exploration to um, artificial intelligence. The only problem in Nigeria with at on time, we are always in a reactive mode instead of um, adopting preventive measures. Most countries have gone far now using artificial intelligence in trying to solve those kind of but, problems. But then let, let me ask so you, let, so, sorry to interject, to let, let me ask you this. I mean, so much has been said, of course, uh, about uh, the use of technology, using drones and all of that. And, and I can understand. I mean, you just gave an example of Saudi Arabia. But then when you look at the terrain of Saudi Arabia, compared to that of the Niger Delta region. Would, would you say they are the same? Because we're, we're talking about a desert country here, and, and you know what it is like in, in the desert, compared to, you know, um, 
uh, uh, savannah rainforest where where you have uh, mangroves uh, and obviously getting drones down there uh, to, to carry out surveillance may not be as, as straightforward as you would have in 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 a, you know in in a in a, a region where the pipes are more like in plain sight. Thank you. There are various types of drones you can use. There's one you can use in desert. There's one you can use in water. There's one you can use in mangrove region. There are all kinds of drones that you can use, but. Getting uh, using drones now are not. Um, I think uh, the adoption of artificial intelligence is helping more. You can stay in your control room and deploy the tools that will do the monitoring mm. and detection, even the preventive uh, uh, det uh, maintenance. It has to detect most of those things using your uh, using all the things. They are very very um, smart cameras and smart systems that you can use that will accept. Let's, I know that Saudi Arabia is a desert, but they have their own system tailored for their own use. We can deploy such technology in Nigeria that will meet our needs to help us solve this uh, endemic problem of uh, oil theft, uh, pipe um, uh, breaking of uh, the pipes, and, uh, and the pipes that kind of uh, get corroded over many years that have not been changed. So, so beyond the issue of oil theft now, uh, and you, you just talked about... Um... Uh, antiquated old uh, pipelines, for instance. W what other issues may be preventing us from, you know, pumping uh, as much oil as we would want? I mean, it, it, it's quite instructive that the NNPC GMM, NNPC CEO now said that, look, we, we have the capacity, even without adding more rigs, that we can conveniently produce 2 million barrels of oil per day. So beyond oil theft, w what also is holding us back? Yeah, um, there are a lot of um, militating factors, starting from the infrastructures, government policies uh, that they need to review. Uh, look at the international oil companies, the IOCs. Some of them are leaving Nigeria, and they're leaving their onshore and handing it over to, um, uh, to indigenous companies, concentrating on the offshore uh, production in deep waters, which um, the joint operation agreement uh, helps them to do their business with ease. So we need a kind of, um, uh, there are certain things we need to consider. Look at the security situation. Is it safe for uh, most oil companies to bring their experts here to work? It's not safe. Some of them are big nap here and there, and one thing or the other happening to them. And there are the costs or two. You need, there are some companies, they have army barracks, they have police barracks. To guide to to just guide guide their employees. These are things that the companies need to look into. Provide the enabling environment for these companies to work, get the oil out of the ground, and pump it to the various uh, tanks where they can uh, uh, sell it. But unfortunately, we have a very conducive environment in the country now for business for businesses to thrive. That's one thing the government should look into. What do you need to do to help this company? Not only just carrying uh, armed policemen and uh, armies to be guarding them everywhere they are. Some people are even affected psychologically everywhere, seeing all these kind of uh, armed thousand people uh, guarding them. That's not the right thing to do. I think uh, the government need to look more at what are the real cause of this problem and let's tackle it. Then we can produce more oil. Now, I, I know one of the problems that uh, some of these IOCs have identified is, is the cost of production. Um, even the NNPC uh, uh, CEO alluded to that and, and that, look, the, the target is to make sure uh, the cost of production is, is brought down to somewhere around uh, probably, say, $20. But, but that at, at the moment, it's, it's way too high, more than what um, you, you would have in, in some other countries. And I understand it's also one of the reasons why some of these IOCs are, are actually divesting and some of them are actually considering pulling out. What, what exactly, why is the cost of production of a barrel so expensive in Nigeria and cheaper elsewhere? Yeah, there are a lot of factors you have to consider. There are a lot of factors you have to consider when you are looking at the cost of production. Um, look at most of the equipment that, we, that the oil companies use. None of them is manufactured in this country. You bring them into this country. You bring experts, and there are a lot of um, 
take take an example the issue of uh, security i just mentioned before mm -hmm. the cost of security to iocs is enormous you need to check how much they are contributing in terms of um, trying to secure their facilities and, and all of that is factored into cost right so then if I may, if I may just mention another thing, one other thing is logistics. That's one of the one of the contribute to the cost. Where logistics, that's part of it. So, so all of this, all of these things you've mentioned, they, they are all factored into the cost, and that's what pushes up the the cost of uh, production of a barrel. Correct. So, what do we need to do to address this? Okay. Yeah. Well, one thing we need to do to address it, first of all, like I said earlier, handle the issue of insecurity. Handle the issue of insecurity. Then provide the basic infrastructures that company needs to, to survive. Provide those basic infrastructures. And they try to remove a lot of bottlenecks, those bottlenecks in the procurement system that add up to the costs going from this hand to this hand most ioc's uh, they, they they deal with uh, the um with the, the with the with the specialists that produces those equipments and bring them into the country and a lot of things associated with this i know there are some as um, support or tax exemptions on some materials but not all of them and you see the costs of um, uh, of a shipment and the cost of clearing and the time it takes and the security provided for it is something that the government needs to address. Uh, NNPCC will need to come up with uh, ways to address some of these issues and the influence of the experts and bringing the capital into the country too. And it, it helps. Many people are not willing now to invest their money in Nigeria because of the unstable economy. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, no doubt. Um, uh, just, just before I let you go, do, do you think, um, just as the NMPC uh, 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 CEO said, that w we can conveniently do two million barrels per day, uh, even without adding more rigs, uh, even though we're not doing it? Well, it depends. That's 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 what he feels. You can add, you can add more rigs. You can bring some rigs to to do some work over to. Um, production optimization. It does not mean that what it means bringing new new rig to drain new well, I guess that's what he means. But you can work on those uh, wells. But one thing you should not do is that some of the wells are aging and they are not producing as they used to produce as at the time um, they were at their peak or the draining when they were commissioned. We they can we can do that depending he has his he has his statistics. So I don't have all the statistics here to say uh, mm. conveniently whether we can easily do it or not. But what I mean, what I'm saying is that there are ways you can do those things. If you don't want to new rigs to three new wells, you can do production optimization for some wells which you can only optimize. But I tell you, there are some wells that no matter how you optimize and try to kickstart them again, they might not get to the optimal level. Well, we'll wait and see the outcome of this emergency declared by the NNPC. But, but there's no question at all that Nigeria needs to increase its oil production because it's, it's one of the reasons why we're facing the current uh, difficult economic situation we're battling with at the moment. Uh, Mr. Davy Yeri, thank you very much for coming on the program and thanks for your time. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Pre appreciate We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Don't go away. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How, in practical terms, can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? Because when you go into public office, you must be ready to answer to the people. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion facts and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. The new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. Digi360, dissecting the issues.